What do Mattel, Banana Republic, ButcherBox, and Glossier all have in common? They power their businesses with Shopify. Shopify is the most innovative and scaled commerce platform on the planet that also happens to have the best converting checkout on the planet. And that's no industry secret. That's Shopify. Learn more at shopify.com slash enterprise. What's up, everybody? You are now listening to the Success Playbook Podcast, where we talk about pop culture, life and career success, and of course, we're going to talk about who got dunked on the night before. (laughs) I'm your host, Chanel S. Reynolds, and I've been in the sports industry for several years. My goal is to take what I've learned from years of dominating the sports industry as a black woman to help my listeners defy the odds and level up in life and career. Now, let's dig into this week's episode. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your girl, Chanel S. Reynolds, and you are listening to the Success Playbook Podcast. Y'all, you are listening to episode one. I am so excited to have you here. Thank you for trusting me uh, and listening to my podcast and tuning in. By tuning in, you have officially joined my elite group of homies. Yes, we are going to kick it, pull up to the podcast every week in which we'll discuss various topics that are near and dear to my heart, whether it be uh, career navigation, leadership, success. Of course, sports is going to be thrown in there every now and then. So y'all, I'm really excited to have you here. So without any further delay, we are going to run into, we are going to head into, let's run into our next topic. Each show, I'm going to cover three different segments. Of course, I will have our hot topics, our uh, straight off the press, things that are relevant to our culture today. Um, We're also going to cover the locker room sports updates, and then we are going to cover the actual show segment. So at this point, we're going to pivot into our hot topics. Yes, those are our culture and current events. So Every now and then you'll also see me pick up my phone because this is where I house everything. If you have been tuned into the streets, whether it be the social media streets, the blog streets, the internet streets, even the LinkedIn streets, because y'all know that's where I love to play. If you have been tuned in, you would have come across Walmart. Walmart, come, 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 come forward, please. Walmart. No, we didn't ask for this. Okay, let me backtrack. So for those of you who may not know, Walmart has come up with a line of Juneteenth product, including ice cream, a Juneteenth ice cream, including plates, napkins, and other decorative items. And the napkins even say, it's the freedom for me. Let's take a step back. So as we all know, we're actually in the beginning of June. In the next couple of weeks, we will be celebrating Juneteenth, which is a day that observes the freedom of the slaves, the freedom of African-Americans here on U.S. soil. Juneteenth officially became a federal holiday actually quite recently, and the world has started to observe this holiday. Um, It's become something that has been very mainstream. However, A lot of people weren't aware of Juneteenth prior to a couple of years ago. Shout out to organizations like the Juneteenth Foundation. Shout out to uh, Laquan Austin. Shout out to him. Shout out to the amazing work that you're doing in Washington, D.C. and um, making sure that you're enlightening folks about Juneteenth and wishing you the best of luck for your events that you have coming up. Okay, back to Walmart. Walmart has taken it upon their selves. Walmart has given themselves the audacity. Walmart has literally taken this thing that we observe, taken this landmark moment, taking this thing that lives near and dear to our heart, taking this thing that has changed the trajectory of the African-American as we know it. And they made that thing to be a lighthearted thing by saying, here goes some ice cream, some Juneteenth ice cream. And here are some napkins that you can wipe the corners of your mouth with after your uncle has has barbecued, whatever it is, he gonna barbecue at the Juneteenth barbecue. And you can wipe the corners of your mouth with the, it's the freedom for me napkins. Walmart, what? We didn't ask for this. 
Walmart, here's the thing. If you don't know, y'all are getting washed on social media right now. If you haven't tuned in to the streets, Black people ain't asked for this. Black people didn't want this. Black people do not want you to... Uh, somebody said it best, and I, I forgot who said it, but they said, I don't want you all to, yes, sis, Juneteenth. I don't need your hand claps and validation for Juneteenth. I don't need you to make light of something that is so sacred, which is Juneteenth. Walmart, I don't know what exactly it is that you were trying to do with this. I don't know if you were trying to show solidarity for the Black community. I don't know if you were trying to show support for the Black community. I honestly don't know what was going through your heads. But if the intention was to genuinely make change or to genuinely stand for the Black community, you could have done this in so many other ways. Here's one. Hire more diversity, equity, and inclusion practitioners to work in your corporate offices. Here's how I know you don't have many. They wouldn't have allowed you to make such a fumble with this opportunity. (laughs) They wouldn't have allowed you to sit here and make Juneteenth ice cream and Juneteenth and it's the freedom for me napkins. Whoever your DE&I lady man is, if they actually exist, they wouldn't have allowed this to go down. And if they do exist... If if they're if you actually do have a DEI, a diversity, equity, and inclusion leader, whether it be chief diversity officer, uh, senior director, whatever, head of DEI, whatever, if that person actually is employed at the Walmart Corporation, wherever you are on the map, I can guarantee you nobody invited that person to the table when it came to making this decision. No, they they you couldn't have. You couldn't have. Because your DEI person would have said, mm, raise his hand, not a good idea. Let's let's not do this. Let's show support in other ways. Let's donate X amount of money to this community. Let's put economic resources back into the black community. Let's not make it's the freedom for me napkins. Walmart, if this person actually exists, I challenge you to lean on them a little bit more. I challenge you to invite them into the room. I challenge you to give them a platform to have a voice so that things like this will not go down again because quite frankly, y'all look like clowns. And this is a message to all the diversity, equity, and inclusion practitioners that are out there. Go with your gut. Don't be afraid to raise your hand. Even if you don't practice in DE&I and you just, you're, you're an employee and you just come across something like this and you really are not with it, raise your hand and let them know, hey team, this is not a good idea. Let's go in this direction instead. Use your voice because I can guarantee you Walmart feels like dummies right now. You know why? Because they pulled the products off the market. And now they're facing a PR storm. <laughs> like, had they leaned on their DEI people, their PR people, their public relations people will not have to clean up this mess. So, Walmart, I conclude this hot topics moment by saying, Walmart, get it together. We ain't asked for that. Walmart, get it together. Hire more diversity, equity, and inclusion people in your corporate offices. Walmart, get it together. Invite your DEI people to the table so that things like this won't happen again. Walmart, get it together. I hope you're enjoying this week's episode so far. If you haven't already, be sure to grab your copy of The Success Playbook, written by yours truly. This book shares with readers some of my secrets to success, including understanding your power, being intentional, unleashing your beast mode, and my ultimate favorite, the art of taking L's. Grab your copy at www.chanelsreynolds.com. All right, that was a lot. (laughs) Um, Pivoting to the locker room. So again, team. I say, I'm sorry. I just said, team, it it feels like I'm at work, like I'm leading a meeting. 
y'all are my homies okay we are not in we're going to be professional we're going to be um this is going to be a place where you can learn but i'm not going to be super buttoned up if you want super buttoned up follow me on linkedin you're going to hear the word y'all on this podcast you're going to hear my my delaware accent come out every now and then um so yeah okay so in this segment we are discussing the locker room. Locker room is where you'll receive sport updates. You're not going to get all the technicalities because that's just not who I am. I have an opinion. When something happens to your kitchen, you might say, This is ludicrous. But that won't fix your home. That will only get you the rapper, Ludicrous. Having trouble? Don't panic. Don't be alarmed. You need to file a claim? Holla at State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. That's right. You can file a claim on the app or call us. Thanks, Mr. Chris. No matter how ludicrous the situation, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. State Farm, Bloomington, Illinois. You know, sports, but I'm not all into, oh, he got that stat. She got that stat. They got that stat. That ain't that ain't me. I ain't into all the all the numbers and the averages. And I, I like who I like. I said what I said. It is what it is. Um, so that'll be, uh, this segment. So today we're going to talk about game one of the NBA finals. So by the time you listen to this, um, we'll most likely have already watched game two, which takes place on Sunday, the 5th, Sunday, June 5th. So let's talk about game one of the NBA finals. We've had the Boston Celtics score 120 with Golden State Warriors coming in short at just 108. So yes. The Warriors lost. Now, I did predict that the Washington, excuse me, not Washington, that the Golden State Warriors uh, will indeed win. I took a pause there because I can see some of y'all laughing at me on the other side of the screen. I can hear y'all just laughing at me. I, I said it. I think the Warriors can still take it. The Warriors can still win. It's just going to take a lot of strategy for this team to get it together. Uh, it's going to take some uh, some prayer, perhaps some fasting. Uh, they may have to seek the Lord a little bit, but I do believe that the Warriors can take this thing. They're going to have to work for it. They're going to have to work for it. They're going to have to play hard and play all the way through, but I do believe that the Warriors can work, through, work for it. Um, the Boston Celtics gave it to him in the fourth quarter by scoring 40 points and the Warriors scoring just 16. Y'all, the Warriors got washed. The Warriors got washed in the fourth quarter. But again, I'm still optimistic. I still think that they can do it. Who are you rooting for? Tell me in the comments, Where, whenever you watch this, tell me in the comments, who exactly are you rooting for? Are you rooting for the Celtics? Are you rooting for the Warriors? Tell me why. Shoot me a DM. Let me know. I was talking about the NBA Finals to somebody, and they laughed at me because I thought that the Warriors was going to win, and I still do. Um, but then they also said, I mean, Draymond Green is just smoke and mirrors. Draymond Green is overrated basically and look i don't think that this is just that person that person's opinion and the person said yeah like how many points did the how many points did draymond green score and they looked it up draymond scored four points in that entire game four points y'all is draymond green overrated that's what I want you to shoot me a DM about. I, I really want to know your opinion. Is Do you think Draymond Green is overrated? Do you all think that he contributes to the Warriors in a positive way? I think he does. Do you all think that he is just smoking mirrors? Do you all think that the best thing that he does is he's just a hype man and he's just able to get everybody else hype on the court just by being there, but he doesn't really contribute anything else? Hmm. Is Draymond Green that classmate that doesn't contribute to any of the assignment, but shows up on the day you all have to present and be like, I'm going I'm to do four, five, and six. I'm going to do slides four, slides five, and slides six, and uh, y'all just fall. No, Draymond, I'm going to run the show because you ain't do nothing. You ain't contribute. You stand in the back, Draymond. Is Draymond that classmate that did not contribute to the assignment? Is Draymond 
that coworker that pulls up to the meetings and you say something like, hey, I, I think that we should do this, 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 and this. And they say, oh, great job, Chanel. Oh, yeah. Is Draymond the person that speaks right after you and contributes nothing but just repeats what you said? Huh. Is Draymond that colleague that can present a strong PowerPoint and can present the strategic plan and looks good on the outside? But afterwards, he don't do no work. After the presentation, he doesn't implement. After everybody has looked at it and said, oh, this looks nice. He don't put in the work. Is that Draymond? That ain't Draymond. Tell me what you think. OK, I'll, look, we'll see. All right. We'll see how he performs in game two. I am going to predict. I don't think that the Warriors will win game two. I don't. Um, the Celtics, I believe, will have the home court advantage. They're going to take it, but then the Warriors are going to come in hot. They're going to get a rude awakening in Boston, and then the, the Warriors are going to come back. That's just what I'm thinking. If I'm wrong, I doubt it, y'all. I'm not. <laughs> I'm usually good at this prediction stuff. Here's the thing. We're all going to go through failure. The question isn't if you'll go through the question is how you'll go through. Will you allow this moment to make you or break you? Will this circumstance make you bitter or make you better? Grab your copy of The Art of Taking L's to understand the breakdown of my personal concept, The Art of Taking L's. This book includes biblical and practical principles to help you effectively navigate through life and career changes. More importantly, the book shows its readers how to embrace adversity instead of running. You need this in your life. Grab your copy at www.chanelsreynolds.com. Okay, moving on to our actual actual show segment. So I wanted to use this show to officially introduce who I am, to introduce myself. Uh, a lot of you are being introduced to who I am. Um, this may be your first time. So I wanted to make sure that you all, you know, got the full concept of who I am, what I do, what I like, all the fun stuff. So that moving forward, when you listen to episodes, you could sort of have that background. All right. The first thing is, so one thing about Chanel that you may or may not know is I am a sport professional. Yes, I have been in the industry for about eight years, going on nine years, Um, spent some time both in the NBA and the NFL. Uh, So I've been in this industry for the past, again, eight years. Um, I've seen a lot of things happen. Actually, when I started as an intern, the NBA was on lockout. Um, so I was an intern at the Wells Fargo Center. The NBA was on lockout. So it's been great. It's been a journey. I've had exposure into a lot of different uh, live events, um, especially working in sports. I get access to uh, other entertainment live events, such as like, you know, concerts. I've seen Stevie Wonder live. I've seen Beyonce live. Like it's been a great experience, a lot of perks. Um, so yeah, it's been dope. So that's one thing. Number one. Number two, I am a DEI practitioner. Yes, I spoke about uh, DEI practitioners earlier within our hot topics segment when I talked about Walmart. Uh, I actually do the work, so that's why I'm so passionate about it. And prior to being in diversity, equity, and inclusion, I pretty much spent the entire uh, part of my career in revenue generation, whether it be like ticket sales, ticket sales management, uh, corporate partnership sales, revenue generation. Like I've always loved it. A lot of, hmm, a lot of women typically shy away from sales roles. It is statistics. Um, but I'm, I'm starting to see a lot of, a lot more women are starting to go after those types of roles, which I love to see Let's level the playing field. Um, but it is a, it's a tough thing to do, but it's so rewarding. And I've been in, again, revenue generation for the, the I want to say up to seven years. Um, and then this past year, I've made the official pivot into DE&I. So my pivot actually came from while I was uh, the director of one of the sales teams, uh, that of the company company that I was working for, I started the first uh, Black Employee Resource Group for my team. Yes, the team was around for about 90 years. It's been in existence for 90 years. However, they never had an ERG, an Employee Resource Group, uh, a community that makes Black employees feel, feel special, feel seen, heard, and valued. Um, so 
I built that alongside my colleagues. I don't know if they're listening, but shout out to Astasia, shout out to Calvin. Uh, they, we, the three of us got together. We started this thing, and from that, you know, leadership saw that I had a passion for it. So I did make that pivot from uh, sales or from ticket sales and revenue generation to DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion. So DEI work basically I'm tasked for making things better for historically marginalized groups, especially in the sport industry where it is white male dominated. So I am tasked with, of course, diverse recruitment, diverse development, um, and any sort of strategy to help our historically marginalized folks uh, advance and to uh, make sure that they're performing at their their best. Um, DEI has grown to be very popular in the past few years, especially with the death of George Floyd, um, the murder of George Floyd, excuse me. And I see that companies are starting to take it more and more serious. What do Mattel, Banana Republic, ButcherBox, and Glossier all have in common? They power their businesses with Shopify. Shopify is the most innovative and scaled commerce platform on the planet that also happens to have the best converting checkout on the planet. And that's no industry secret. That's Shopify. Learn more at shopify.com slash enterprise. So let's continue to hold these companies of, these companies uh, accountable and make sure that Every company, if your company doesn't have a DEI person, a DEI office, a DEI um, space in which they they practice in and they produce programming and produce events and all that good stuff, um, you should probably ask about that. You and even when you're interviewing, I challenge you all to ask what their what the company is doing for historically marginalized groups. And if you want to get specific, hey, what is the company doing for Black people? What is the company doing for Latinos? What is the company doing for LGBTQ plus community? Uh, because you you want to, with whatever company that you affiliate yourself with, you want to make sure that they're doing their part in creating equity for these historically marginalized groups. You can tell us something I'm passionate about. Um, the next thing. So I'm a twin. I have a twin sister. Yes, she has her own podcast. Her podcast is called Paging Dr. Shonda, uh, as well as her Instagram and all her, um, all of her other social media outlets. So if you just Google or research at Paging Dr. Shonda, you'll see my twin. Uh, no, that is not me. That is her. I am me. Um, it, it's actually really funny. I was on a work call with some colleagues from... Um, I want to say it was the Raiders. And he said, hold up, Dr. Shonda, why is Dr. Shonda on the call? Yeah, no, I'm not Dr. Shonda. I'm Chanel. I've been in this industry for years. So it was funny. People still get us confused. Um, we also have, it's a lot, we got a lot of sisters. Okay. It's five girls total. Um, we have a little sister that looks just like us too. So sometimes people will get her confused with us. So house full of girls. Yes. All right, moving on. I am a fitness enthusiast. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll probably notice that I asked you all if you all worked out the day for that day. Um, I'll frame it this way. Have, did you sweat today? Or, hey, summer's coming. Did, did you get your workout in? And let me tell y'all this, okay? Just because I didn't post it doesn't mean I didn't do it, okay? It just means I didn't get to post that day. But I do work out about, I want to say on average, five days a week. So I try to make it Monday through Friday, um, just to make sure I feel like success and health go hand in hand. Like, what is all this money if you're not healthy and able to enjoy it? What is all the success if you're not healthy and able to travel? So I, I do believe that success and health go hand in hand. So make sure you're taking care of your body so that you can operate to your maximum self. All right. Lastly, I am a sports fan. I'm a sports enthusiast. This is not a sports podcast. Let me repeat that. This is not a sports podcast, okay? This is a podcast that focuses on 
uh, various topics, and we'll talk about sports every now and then, but it's not a sports podcast. If you want to listen to sports, listen to uh, my homeboy, Sadiq, listen to some of my other homeboys, listen to ESPN, all that good stuff. Um, I am not the one that's going to give you the technicalities. That is not me. I'll give you my opinion, okay? Um, so again, this is not a sports podcast, but I do enjoy sports. I do enjoy sports. So my favorite is basketball. A lot of people think that I'm just this huge football fan. No, my favorite sport is basketball. Um, my favorite team is the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, my favorite player of all time is, of course, the, the amazing, I'm sure you guessed it by now, Allen Iverson. Yes, AI is still my favorite player. Um, however, currently, players that are currently on the team, uh, my favorite is Joel Embiid. He, look. He gets on my nerves sometimes, but I know he's a great player. He's a star. He's a great player. He just, he just be falling around like, okay, I get it. You got fouled. You don't have to fall every time you get fouled. But all right, that's just me. I don't know. That's my opinion. And then Giannis, of course. Giannis is one of my favorite players. My favorite team is the 76ers, but my favorite player is you – know, my favorite player – um, uh, outside of the 76ers is Giannis. I always mess up his last name, but Antetokounmpo, I believe is how you say it, Giannis Antetokounmpo. And yeah, he's a beast. He's great. So <laughs> here's actually my philosophy on teams. I feel like I always, whenever dating, y'all, I always ask the guy who his favorite team is. Never fails. I I think that you can learn a lot about a person, a lot about a man by who he roots for. If the man says he doesn't have a team, I don't know, sis. He might not be loyal. Mm, I don't know. If you don't have a team, if you can't be loyal to a team, who can you be loyal to? Sis, if he is not loyal to a team, he will not be loyal to you. Okay, y'all. I'm your host, Chanel S. Reynolds. You are listening to... The Success Playbook Podcast. It's been fun. Thank you for joining. Join me for episode two. See ya. When something happens to your kitchen, you might say, This is ludicrous. But that won't fix your home. That will only get you the rapper, Ludicrous. Having trouble? Don't panic. Don't be alarmed. You need to file a claim? Holla at State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. That's right. You can file a claim on the app or call us. Thanks, Mr. Chris. No matter how ludicrous the situation, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. State Farm, Bloomington, Illinois.